we're not at a place where we're going to be able to wait for somebody else to come in from the outside for government to do the job for us or education to do the job for us. It really is something that I think we have to do ourselves. Part of the reason for needing to do that for ourselves is that we really need to reach not only people who are already on the same page as we are with conservation, but people who are farther outside that fold. And really the only way to do that is one-on-one -on -one conversation where I reach out to you and find out what's meaningful to you, find out what's important to you, and then find a way to connect conservation, sustainability, to that thing that is interesting to, to you. I was telling someone earlier about my uh, uncle who for a long time would come to me and say, well, I don't believe in climate change, but can you tell me again about it? And we spent probably years going back and forth and never making any progress. And finally, I had a realization that he's a hunter and he loves to be out in wilderness observing and that I could connect conservation and climate to deer and bear. And that was it, that was what it took. And every community really has different things going on. It really might be, it's maybe conservation, but it's also the economy. How do we do conservation without putting people out of work? In other places, it might be conservation and you know, education or conservation and economic growth or conservation and so, you know, if every community has a slightly different issue that they're facing, even the conservation might look different. In some communities, the conservation might be about needing more green space or more parkland. In other places, it might be about restoration or co-evolution of, of community. And so what working in a community allows you to do is to tailor what's happening to what's going on in that particular space, what people need, what people are afraid of, what other problems they, they see. We can sometimes use government or policy to put in place the structures that make that easier for communities to do, but it really is gonna be all about communities kind of taking that on and driving it forward in the way that makes the most sense for them. When I think about the different ways that we can tell the stories of conservation, I feel surrounded by dystopian visions. Even when I was teaching, I could go through a whole semester of climate change and biodiversity loss or just focusing on, on problems. And then I realized that all of us, individuals and communities, steer in the direction of what you're looking at. So if all we're doing is telling stories about the bad things that are happening, we're so much more likely to turn in that direction, even if we don't want to. So that, for me, really drove my interest in telling hopeful stories and positive stories and thinking about, okay, what's working? Beyond that, when we know a thousand things that are working in different places, you just go through it like a little Rolodex and figure out what pieces you can take from here or pieces you can take from there to put them together to say, oh, this might work in my community. I'm going to try this. So am I optimistic about humans managing our way out of this? Manage is a fraught word. I don't know if we're going to manage our way out of it. I don't think we're going to control our way out of it. I don't think we're going to talk our way out of it. I do think we're going to find a way out. I'm not sure what the right verb is in there. When I look at the database that we've collected of about a thousand projects that people are doing trying to improve their what I would call a social ecological system. They're almost trying to like joy their way out of it or like commune their way out of it. What people are often trying to do is connect themselves or their community to nature. So they're gonna re-green a vacant lot or they're going to, um, you know, take some ecosystem and restore it. 
And in the process of getting people to do that work, they also end up connecting the community. And that connection of people to nature, people to people, often nature to nature, somehow putting those three things together sort of grows your way out of the problem. To me, that's where I'd like to see conservation, whether we continue to call it conservation or whether there's a word for what it is that we're building, that it it comes with a spirit of play and improvisation and engagement. Mm -hmm.